Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well, we're nearly there now, aren't we? 37 games gone, just one visit to the London Stadium away from winding up the 2017-18 Premier League season. And it'll be our 1,000th game in the Premier League. It's not one of only six teams that will reach that figure this weekend. And absolutely, it's something to be proud of as well, it really is. Uh, Everton Football Club have deserved that uh, accolade. We are a top, top club. If we can avoid defeat against West Ham, We'll have ended the season really strongly. One defeat in nine, and that was against Manchester City. Yeah, we have, and uh, let's 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 be right. Man City have beaten everybody. Uh, they're a quality team. They're the champions. So to lose to them uh, is no hardship. But uh, yeah, we have finished the season strong. Uh, we've picked up good points, and uh, yeah, I've been delighted the way that we've finished the games. Well, you and I entertained, and we had a great spectacle earlier this week. We were at the Supporters Club Awards at the Hangar 34 venue in Liverpool. Every week on the Everton Show in recent weeks, we've been eulogising about Jordan Pickford. But what is it specifically that you like about Jordan Pickford? I like his character. I, I, really, I really do. I think he's. I think he's old school. I think he's one of us. Uh, I think he's bought into the Everton way. I think he was born to be an Everton goalkeeper. Uh, I had mad one in Neville Southall, but I think this boy's exactly the same. <laughs> he loves it. He thrives on it. Yeah. If he gets a bit of stick, he loves it, and uh, he plays with a smile on his face. But most of all, Daz is a quite brilliant keeper, I think. And I think he's only going to get better and better. And hopefully, he's, for many, many years, he's going to be in the blue shirt of Everton. What will John Joe Kenny have taken from this season? Because I think it's been difficult for the boy. He came in, did a really good job, proved himself a capable Premier League footballer. But he just happens to be behind one of the best right-backs in the Premier League and arguably the most popular Everton player. I feel so sorry for him because... I believed he should have made his debut before he actually made his debut. I think he was playing well for the under-23s and he weren't really given that chance uh, under the former boss. And I think he would become a little bit frustrated, and rightly so, because he was playing well. But he came into the team, did a great job. Uh, it's not easy replacing, you've just said it, replacing Seamus Coleman, who's probably one of the best right-backs not only in England, but in English football, but in Europe. Mm. He, he, he proves that when he plays international games. Uh, he's captain of his international team, so uh, what he's got to do, John Joe, is just nuttle down again and uh, just get playing to what he <coughs> can for next season. And uh, who knows, it'll be a straight battle. That's mm. what you want in every position, but two great lads, two great right backs. And hopefully here, yeah, I keep saying it, oh, the, uh, they're at Everton for years to come. It was a good night at the Supports Club Awards for John Joe Kenny and for Wayne Rooney and for Jordan Pickford. And at the Dixies, the official end of season awards last week, it was a terrific night for a boy called Dan Harden. Just have a look at this. Dan is a volunteer for Everton in the community. He comes in once a week um, and completes numerous different tasks for the charity. He's volunteered for Everton in the community since September 2010. He undertakes various projects, his 
currently he really enjoys the Pass on the Memories project that helps people with dementia and he also does a lot of admin jobs. Um, he's raised a lot of money as well through zip slides, Santa dashes and he's involved with the Pan Disability Project, Everton's deaf team. He's got a season ticket, goes to numerous away games and we just thought he's an inspiration. Mm -hmm. He's just so proud, isn't he? He's proud to wear the badge for Everton. He's passionate about Everton. He's so positive. And it just brings joy, doesn't he, to when we're at the ground. Dan's a, an amazing individual. Um, so every time he comes into the hub, obviously all the staff are familiar with Dan. Um, and he never fails to put a smile on everyone's face. It's a huge impact that he has, um, not only in, in the work that he does for us, but also just the energy he brings, um, the enthusiasm, the positivity he brings to the building. Um, he's just an amazing individual. We definitely think that Dan is number one blue. That was one of the highlights of the night, wasn't it, Snuds? Lump in the throat stuff, mm. it really was, uh, to see his parents on there as well with him communicating through uh, signals then, wow, I, I, I was mesmerised and the excitement in his face, it, it just summed him up and it summed his love for Everton Football Club. Up. He loved it, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And, uh, and quite rightly so. Yeah, especially when he was giving it up in his <laughs> fist as well and the crowd appreciated that mm. and uh, he so much deserved that fan of the year. And I often see him around Goodison Park, we all do because he's one of the volunteers now. Again, we always praise, quite rightly, the staff and the participants mm -hmm. with Everton Community. The volunteers as well who give up their time and accumulate so many hours do a fantastic job. It wouldn't happen if it weren't for volunteers like that. It really wouldn't. And uh, yeah, you see everybody, the staff that work at Everton Football Club, but the volunteers, they're doing it for nothing. Mm. Just to get their hours in as well. And it, it's great. And they've always got a smile on the face. And anything that we ask them to do, the volunteers, they will gladly do it. There are many, many things that make us proud to be blue and Everton in the community undoubtedly is one of them. And that's why Everton in the community has been granted the freedom of the city. Denise Barrett-Baxendale, for one, is very, very proud. To have such a significant accolade bestowed upon us at the football club is just fantastic. After 30 years of contributing to the local community and developing the social programmes, it's just fantastic. And to have it on the last day of the season is tremendous. But a huge thank you to the fans, really, because the community scheme is so successful because our fans challenge us to be the best we can in the community. So a really big thank you to the fans. Because everybody associated with Everton Football Club, the supporters, the staff, the players, the board, embrace Everton in the community. They've got that pride in Everton in the community? They do because it's such an important part of our football club, of being a club, you know, and, and, and ensuring that we have that sense of belonging and commitment to the community. So, you know, it really is a shared accolade today, as you say, for all of the people you've just spoken about. And we're delighted from the community programme to be able to bring that here on the end of the, uh, at the end of the season and receive the accolade here at Goodison Park. And I know your attitude is, we are the best, but we want to get better. Absolutely. You know, we won't ever rest on our laurels. We are, you know, it's... Uh, it's such um, we have such ambitious targets for the community and, and the demand on our services has never been greater, which means we cannot slow down, we have to be better um, and we have to take every opportunity we can to reach out and connect with the community. The freedom of the city's nods, it quite literally doesn't get any better than that. certainly doesn't and uh, Denise Barrett-Baxendale deserves that. She's driven this, uh, this programme in the community. Uh, to its height and uh, I love doing things I know the players love doing things in the community and they deserve everything every little honour that they can get absolutely and one of the disability football teams is the amputee team we were at Finch Farm recently mm. the amputee team were putting on a coaching session and it was terrific wasn't it wow just going about on the crutches and the power they generate in the shots it's quite incredible and the pressure that must be on their arms as well going about but they were all loving it they were all playing with a smile on the face and then that's when you think stop moaning stop yeah. moaning about yeah. things in life and you watch them boys and they're playing football and it was great to watch it really was what about the veteran Steve Johnson oh. he can still put the ball in the back <laughs> of the net can't what, he I wouldn't like to be a goalkeeper Steve <laughs> we know what he's done uh, for England we know what he, he means to this football club but bye does he uh, pack a power punch he really does he's uh, unbelievable shot 
But we had some guests, didn't we, if you recall? We were shown mm. around and they stopped to watch it and they were, they were standing there open-mouthed. Mesmerised, they really was. And uh, they, were, they were saying to us every time that the boys were having shots, they were doing a, a shooting session. Every time they were going, wow, that is unbelievable. <laughs> and then when Steve were turning up, they were extra wow because it was that powerful. But uh, no, it must be difficult, but uh, mm. they don't show it that it's difficult. Absolute credit to the football club, they all are. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. Don't go too far away, though, because coming up in part two, we'll hear from James McCarthy, we'll hear from Jen Tosin, and we'll speak a lot more about the visit to West Ham. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. Well, earlier this week at Finch Farm, I caught up with James McCarthy, who, of course, has been out injured since breaking his leg against West Bromwich Albion in really unfortunate circumstances at Goodison Park back in January. But as you're about to see, James McCarthy is in good spirits. Jamesy, fantastic to see you here at USM Finch Farm. The first and most obvious question is, how are you doing? Yeah, it's gone really well. Um, so far, so good anyway. Um, I've been to see the surgeon this morning actually and he's really happy with the way everything's going and um, the bone's healing really well and he says I'm well on course to um, returning maybe just pre-season time. Every little helps doesn't it so every little bit of good news that you get must be good for you? Yeah it's been it's been brilliant to get some good news obviously um, at the time it was all doom and gloom you're worrying about this and that but Certainly, it's just so far so good and it's going really, really well. And with the help of the lads here, um, they've been different class with me. And um, How important is that, Jamesy, to keep coming into USM Finch Farm and keep being in and around the boys and part of the banter? Yeah, it's so important. The lads, make, since day one, they've made me feel so welcome. As I say, they've been brilliant and um, it's, it was good to get back in involved. Um, after a couple of weeks at home, um, I come back and the lads were, were brilliant to see me back. And as I say, it's, it's been brilliant to be back in the gym and getting doing things again. And obviously Seamus knows exactly what you're going through every step of the way, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a different class, Shamey. Um Obviously, as I say, all the lads have been brilliant with me. But obviously Shamey going through the injury, my best mate at the club... Um, he's he's been different class. He's been there at at the hospital. Um, he came and seen me the first morning. Um, even after I just broke it, I, I looked up and Shimi was standing at the bottom of the bed. So he's he's been different <laughs> class to be fair to him. And um, every every little ache I get here and there. Um, but to be honest, it's it's, it's going really well. But any time I do get out, maybe the odd wee bit of pain, I was Shimi and. He tells me straight away what actually he felt and it's just going really good. What types of training can you do? What bits and pieces can you do at the moment down here? Yeah, I've been in the gym doing upper bodies, um, on the bikes. Um, I've started running on the Alter G, so really? it's just so far so good and um, everyone's really happy the way it's going. As I say, I've seen the surgeon and he says I'm well on course and he's really happy with the way things are going. Are you a patient patient or are you an impatient patient? Yeah, I'm pretty impatient at times. <laughs> um, as, as I said, it's nice to be running on the Alter G and stuff. And, um, but the main thing is is the bones are healing really well and um, hopefully not so long um, I'll be out in the grass running and I'm looking forward to that. What about the support from the Evertonians? Yeah, they've been amazing since, um, as, since I've come to the club. They've been brilliant with me and... Um, all the well wishes and all the cards I received, um, it doesn't go missing without um, without saying a big thanks to them. And um, they've been, as I say, they've been different class with me. It must help when you know that you've got the backing of tens of thousands of supporters. It means you've done something right at the football club. Yeah, well, hopefully um, I can I can do more. Um, and as I say, it's, um, it's, it's all going well and the main thing is now is, is making sure I get it right and get back on the pitch as soon as possible. He's a terrific lad, isn't he, James McCarthy, and it's great to see him doing so well and great to see him, or hear him, being so positive. Yeah, it is. Uh, his rehabilitation seems to be coming on great and when we're up at Finch Farm, does, he's now got a smile on his face mm. and that's what I like to see, a, a James McCarthy with a smile on his face because he tells you he's getting better, his leg's feeling better and he'll be getting prepared for next season. 
And when he says he's about to start running on the specially adapted running machine, that's incredible. It is, because it was a nasty break. There's no question about it. We were doing commentary that day. Mm. We seen uh, Rondon's face uh, when it happened, and uh, he, he was emotionally upset as well. So it was, a, it was a bad break, but James is one of them. He's a fighter. You can tell that way he plays football. Uh, he's a determined character, and uh, it'll not be long before we see him back on the pitch in a blue shirt. When he says that Seamus has been there every step of the way, from the second he woke up in the mm. hospital bed after his operation, that doesn't surprise you about Seamus, does not it? Not at all. Not at all. I've just had five minutes with him uh, in the gym, just having a general chat about things. In the and, gym? And Well, I was studying the gym, he was working <laughs> out. And uh, I just had a general chat about uh, his time at Everton and how, he, and how he loves Everton Football Club. Don't surprise me about this boy. I, I cannot speak highly enough mm. of him on and off the fi on and off the pitch. I think he's a terrific lad, and uh, I think Seamus's form will be inspirational to James McCarthy as well. Does when he came back that Leicester game, I f I think that was incredible performance. I really did. He uh, he'd had ten months out, and to be making a run into Leicester City's box in injury time. To, to get up in the 18-yard box, it was quite <laughs> astounding, really. Uh, but that just sums the boy up. It really does. And uh, he's a winner through and through, and he's, uh, he just loves Everton Football Club, doesn't he? And he'll be in action on Sunday when Everton go to West Ham. And so will Jen Tosin, who really is finishing this season with a flourish and really showing the Evertonians what he's all about. He's looking forward to Sunday, and already he's looking forward to next season as well. Yeah, um, it was difficult the, the, the first few months. Because you come from a uh, new culture, you come from a new country. It's it's not easy to to settle in in the Premier League because it's a really tough league. But after a while, when I uh, when I spent time with the guys, with the lads, and uh, when I trained harder, it uh, felt better as well. And uh, now I think I'm settled in perfect uh, to the Premier League. On a personal level, what do you think extra you can achieve next season, given the fact that you'll have had a bit more time with the team? Yeah, after after I do the do, do the pre-season with the team, I think I will feel better. Um, I think next season um, I will score more goals than this season, um, and will I, I hope I will help uh, a lot of a lot of my team. And you were Sam Allardyce's first signing at the club as manager. So does that give you extra confidence, knowing that you have the manager's backing that he brought you in? Yeah, sure, because um, he always believed in me. Um, he brought me, I was his first signing. Um, we are good in contact. We have a good relationship with him. And uh, yeah, it, it feels great to play, to play for him. Just about that relationship with some of those other forward players, because obviously you mentioned Theo Walcott as well, who came in in January the same time as you. Yeah. There's obviously Yannick Bellassi here as well. Do you feel like you've got a good relationship with the other attacking players in the team? Yeah, sure, because um, they also helped me a lot uh, on the pitch and outside the pitch. Um, Theo Walcott, Yannick Bellassi, Gilfi Sigurdsson, these, these are players who know um, the Premier League longer than me. And uh, I think we have a good relationship with them, and, but next season it will be better for sure. Jenk Tosin's one of them centre forward snods who seems to have every type of goal in his locker. He does. From the first game I seen him at Tottenham away, I thought his touch were good. Mm. Uh, he just needed some goals, and he's provided them now. Edders, shots on target. Uh, I think he's. I think he's a good player. He's going to get better and better, and I think we'll comfortably see him next season getting beyond double figures for Everton. And the fans have taken to him as well, haven't they? Yeah, they have. They've got a song about him. I spoke to him the other day about it as well, and he enjoys the song. He likes the song as well. And it's always great to have the fans on your side, especially when you're a striker as well. And uh, if he keeps scoring goals next season like he's, he's already produced now, he'll become a fan's favourite as well. Just let me ask you about Sir Alex Ferguson, Snod. Mm. Really bad news about Sir Alex Ferguson, but seemingly... He's, uh, he's going to come through it. Yeah, let's hope so. Fingers crossed. Uh, wow. What can you say about Alex Ferguson? Alex Ferguson uh, he's won every honour. He's been Man United through and through after he came down from Aberdeen. Uh, terrific character. And for Man United, what he's done is absolutely incredible. But uh, he's, he's a figure of British football. Mm. He certainly is. And uh, let's hope he makes a speedy recovery. And we just wish his family well as well. We wish him well, Snods, and we wish David Moyes well too. He's uh, kept West Ham United in the Premier League. 
I wish him well after Sunday. I don't wish him after well. Sunday. I don't wish him well before the game. <laughs> but no, he, I got on great with Moisey, yourself as well, Daz. Mm. Uh, he's, he, he, he's a nice fella. He really is, and uh, he was, he's a strong character. There's no question about that. He's done well with West uh, West Ham. He's been asked to do the job of keeping him up. He's certainly done that. And, he's uh, had to be a strong character, hasn't he? Yeah, he has because there's been, uh, he, he has as well. He's uh, he took over at Man United from Sir Alex as well, which was a difficult time. Uh, he then went abroad, found that difficult, but he's come back. West Ham have taken him on board. He's done the job, as I said, that he's, he, he were paid to do. He's kept him up. I would like to see him at West Ham next season. Mm. Uh, obviously, I'm not a West Ham fan. I don't know what they think, but he's done the job. He really has. So uh, after Sunday's result, I wish him well. I'll shake his hand and, uh, and, and wish him well, but not before the game does. We, we, we want to see Everton win. We want to win the last game, don't we? Of course we, we do, yeah. Winning the last game takes you into the summer in a good frame of mind. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier in the show. We've been beaten once, hopefully, in nine games mm. after Sunday. And uh, that's been a great end to the, into the season. So, yeah, nothing but a win will do at the London Stadium. The 38th and final Premier League game of the season. And that's just about it for this week's Everton Show. My thanks to Snods for joining us. We'll have one more for you next week. Until then... Goodbye. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.